For artificial intelligence to evolve into its next phase, artificial general intelligence, we must examine the capabilities and limitations of biological neurons and how these relate to machine learning. Thus far in this series, I've focused on things that machine learning does or needs, which biological neurons simply can't do. In this video, I'll turn the tables and discuss a few things that neurons are particularly good at. Future AI. Technologies that think. By connecting a source neuron to a target through a synapse weight of 0.5, the target neuron will fire at half the rate of the source. In fact, it will divide by 2 for any weight between 0.5 and 1, so the precise synapse weight is not critical. For a weight of 0.2, for example, it's a divide by 5 system. Interestingly, although neurons easily divide neural signals, they are not capable of increasing them. There is no combination of synapses which will take a neural signal spiking every 10 milliseconds and transform it into one spiking every 5 milliseconds. This is important for directional hearing. If a sound source is directly in front of you, or behind, the sound will arrive at your two ears simultaneously. If it is directly beside you, it will arrive at the nearer ear first by about half a millisecond. How can a four millisecond neuron detect a sub millisecond difference? If a target neuron is connected to two sources, one through a synapse weight of one and the other through a synapse weight of minus one, if the minus one arrives first, even by a small amount, the neuron won't fire. If the one arrives first, it will. Now, very small differences in axon length between the ear and the detector can create minute delays which can be used to detect the sound direction quite precisely. To detect various differences in signal arrival time, your brain need only have multiple neurons with slightly different axon lengths. With the leisurely 2 meter per second speed that signals travel down axons, a quarter millimeter addition in the axon length will introduce an extra half a millisecond delay. In general, optic neurons fire faster with brighter light. To detect a boundary between a lighter area and a darker area, neurons need to detect small differences in the spiking rate. With a circuit similar to the previous, a pair of neurons can be set to spike one if one side of a boundary is brighter, and vice versa. It turns out that your brain can detect boundaries with much greater precision than you can sense absolute brightness or color intensity. And this is a source of numerous optical illusions and difficulties in computer vision. Here's how neurons might detect absolute brightness. The neuron model can be made more biologically accurate if we add charge leakage. When a synapse imparts a charge to a target neuron, the charge doesn't stay there forever, but leaks away. This effect can be used in a number of ways, the first of which will be to detect interspike timings. If you have a source connected to a target with a weight of 0.9, it will take two incoming spikes to make the target fire. But only if the second spike arrives before the charge has leaked below 0.1. In this way, any neuron acts as a frequency sensor, firing when the source is spiking at or above a specific frequency. This is governed by the leak rate and the synapse weight. A cluster of neurons driven by a single signal can detect the frequency of an incoming signal with considerable precision, but it takes a separate neuron for each frequency level to be detected. To differentiate this from the previous example, a pair of neurons can detect the difference in firing rate regardless of what the rates actually are. But to determine the absolute firing rate, requires a neuron for each rate to be detected. So to detect a hundred different levels of gray would require a hundred neurons at each pixel. 
This is why you can only detect about seven gray levels, but you can detect the boundary between gray levels which would appear identical if they were not touching. A neuron can act as a single bit of short-term memory. In a simple model, consider a neuron connected to itself. If it starts spiking, it will spike indefinitely until some suppressive signal causes it to stop. If the neuron is spiking, this represents a 1, if not a 0. This way, a single neuron can act as a single bit of short-term memory. This is easy to understand, but uses a lot of energy for that continuously spiking neuron because neurons need energy to spike, but almost none otherwise. A better model stores the bit as the accumulated charge as opposed to the firing state. By connecting a set neuron with a synapse weight of 0.9, the internal charge of the bit neuron will be increased, but not enough for the neuron to fire. Now a second input from a read neuron will cause the memory bit to fire, but only if it has been set. To round out the picture, a reset neuron connected with a weight of minus one will clear the memory bit regardless of the state. As an added feature, the read neuron can also fire the reset neuron and the firing memory bit can cause the set neuron to fire again, which will restore the memory bit once more. This means that the memory can store the bit, either one or zero, without consuming any energy by spiking until the memory is needed. Every time the bit is read, it is cleared and restored. To make this a bit more realistic, we'll add leakage back into the mix. Now the memory bit must be read before the internal charge leaks away. The reset signal becomes less necessary because if you just wait a second or two, the memory will fade away on its own. As long as you keep reading the memory though, it will persist. This memory is using a mechanism of charge storage very similar to dynamic RAM, which must be refreshed periodically before the memory content leaks away. These are just some of the things neurons can do which are largely outside the scope of machine learning. In the next video, I'll explore the neuron's greatest advantage over machine learning, its tremendous efficiency. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to be notified when more videos in this series are available. And for now, watch this interesting video.